Hey, welcome to this video today. If you've not filmed a wedding ever before, or if you've filmed a wedding but you've not done it on your own, then come along with me today. I'm gonna to show you how I film a whole wedding day, beginning to end, all on my own. So let's get to it. So the first thing I always do upon arriving at the venue is to get an establishing shot. On this particular day, I'm using a drone, but don't worry if you don't have a drone. It just needs to be a shot that sets the scene for where the wedding will be taking place. I was able to fly the drone coming up from behind the trees to reveal the beautiful hall in its setting in the countryside. It can then be nice to get a little detail shot. So I picked out this arrangement on the front door and I'm just filming at 4K50 to get a nice slow-mo. Now at most weddings at this point, I'll be heading inside to get some shots of the bride having her hair and makeup done. But on this particular day, the bride, despite planning to get ready at the venue, ended up having all of her hair and makeup done elsewhere. So I decided to spend the time setting up my camera ready for the ceremony. Right now I'm connecting an XLR adapter to the top of the camera. And to that I'll be connecting the Rode Wireless Pro receiver to get some nice wireless audio. And finally connecting some headphones. This small bit of preparation now will save me crucial time later when the ceremony is about to begin. I then wanted to get a really nice establishing shot inside the room showing how nice it all looked. I like to get some of the details such as the flower arrangements and anything else in the room that you think might be interesting and shows how pretty everything looks. I knew that the bride at this particular wedding had designed all the signage herself, so I definitely wanted a shot of that. <laughs> and then by this point, some of the guests were starting to arrive. On a typical wedding, you might not get a chance to get many guest arrival shots because you'll be busy doing bride prep. I then headed inside to get some shots. Now what I recommend is, is looking out for the characters, listening, you'll hear the, where the laughter is, you'll hear where the people who are most animated, and just get some lovely natural shots. I try my best where I can to stay as far away from the people I'm filming, just because they don't feel intimidated and you get the best reactions. Now sometimes things don't work out. I saw these guests, I thought they are gonna walk across to the main entrance and I'd have a lovely shot but then they walk the other way it's just sod's law sometimes however I was able to get a similar shot here with just the tiniest bit of encouragement yeah come this way we'll get a nice shot of you all walking together <laughs> mm. and perfect timing here here's the groom come out to greet them by this point, I'd got a lot of shots of the guests who were there at that stage, so I decided to head into the ceremony room and set up this safety camera at the back of the room. It's on a really tall light stand so nobody can block it and it's gonna run through the whole of the ceremony. I then got some more of my audio gear ready, this time the transmitters, the Rode Wireless Pro, and my Sony TX650. I've got them ready, leaving them on the table, just so I have everything prepared ahead of the bride arriving. You'll often see extra detail shots you might have missed earlier. So I saw this lovely sign showing the couple on their engagement shoot. And then the guests with the little girl I saw earlier, they were setting up a really nice shot on the stairs. So I jumped in to get a bit of footage of that as well. And now to the relief of a slightly nervous wedding planner, the bride arrived and I was ready at the top of the steps to get a lovely shot of her walking into the hall. <laughs> She will now be heading off for a quick interview with the registrar and I'm straight back into the ceremony room. And right now I'm about to mic up the groom. You'll see I'm popping on him the Rode Wireless Pro with a lav mic and I'll also be putting on him a Sony TX650. I like to have multiple sources of audio just in case something goes wrong. Shortly after the registrar arrived, so I double mic'd him as well as he's a very important speaker. And finally, any guest who was due to give a reading, I mic them, but just with a single Sony TX650 this time. Time for the ceremony to begin. So I'm stood right at the front, next to the photographer, getting a handheld shot of all of the guests walking down the aisle. And look at this sweet little girl, it was all a bit too much for her. To my side is my camera on a tripod, getting a reaction of the groom. 
as the autofocus on the S5 II camera that I use is so good, I set it to detect faces in the center of the screen and it tends to do a brilliant job of tracking the bride walking down the aisle. Now the bride has arrived at the end of the aisle with her groom, I need to go and check my tripod shot and readjust it. It's always useful to go back to your static cameras during the ceremony just to keep checking everything's okay in terms of framing and exposure. As the ceremony unfolds, I do like to use my handheld camera to get complimentary shots. If any person present knows of any lawful impediment to this marriage, it should now be declared. My handheld camera also allows me to get really nice shots of people doing readings. In a hundred lifetimes, in a hundred words, in any version of reality, I find you and I choose you. It's now time for the couple to say their vows to each other and exchange rings. I've got three different angles on this. There's the safety at the back of the room. I have my tripod shot at the front and my handheld shot. So I know that I've got this covered. Ami, I give you this ring. Ami, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. I promise to care for you. I promise to care for you. Love and honour you. Love and honour you. For as long as I live. For as long as I live. As soon as you hear the registrar start to sum up the ceremony, you know you've got to be ready for that all important kiss. And now, you may kiss your wife. <laughs> what follows next is the signing of the register, and I tend to move around and just get a nice collection of shots of the couple looking happy together, some of the guests enjoying themselves and taking photos. And you normally find that everybody's feeling much more relaxed now that the ceremony's over. Once the signings are over, the couple are announced out of the room and myself and the photographer have agreed to stand at the back of the room and get a nice shot of the couple walking out together. After that, I take one of my cameras that has a wide angle lens on it. I quickly pop it onto my gimbal. I've got a plate that means it can just snap straight on because then we're straight into confetti. I filmed this in 50p so I can slow it down by half the speed and make it nice and dramatic. While I still have the gimbal with me, I get a few natural shots. This lovely shot here as they share a kiss. And a few shots of the guests. It's now time for group photos. In order to make them a little bit more dynamic for the video, I shoot them in 50p and I just move the camera a little bit just gets a bit of depth to the footage. And then I get lots of natural shots of other guests at the wedding as well. We then went off with the bride and the bridesmaids to a nearby field to get some nice footage of them together. Here we go, a bit of movement for the video. Woo! You got it. Left, right, guys. Left, right, left, left, right, left. Yes. <laughs> so three, two, one, go for it. For most of the day, I prefer to capture things as naturally as possible, people being themselves. But sometimes during the couple shoot or during shoots with the bridal party, it's nice to have a bit of fun and direct things a little bit to get the best footage possible. And then, while you're there, I want you to look at who's going to be the first on the dance floor tonight. Sometimes some people feel very nervous being in front of the camera, so anything you can do to take their mind off it, any way you can get them to laugh and interact, is going to result in great shots. Nice, lots of smiles looking at each other. Although this is quite similar to what they were doing before, this time I wanted to shoot it on an 85mm lens, just to get a nice close-up, and I did know that the wide shot combined with this, they might cut well together in the edit. I then went inside to get some shots of the wedding breakfast room, including an establishing shot and a couple of details. The timing of this is quite crucial. You want to go in about 10 minutes before everybody's welcomed in. By that time, the room will be finished and looking beautiful, but you won't have guests who've left jackets on the chairs. And then just walk in together down that way. Yeah. See, whenever you're ready. Yeah. So we're now at the couple shoot, and it's important to get lots of movement. Ask your couple to walk from point A to point B, ask them to hold hands maybe, just give them some basic direction and you should get some lovely natural shots as they're doing these actions. Might have to go down a bit, is that right? Am I on your shot if I'm here? You sure? Yeah? Okay, so um, just gonna get you facing into each other now if that's all right. <laughs> and then pull each other close. <laughs> So get close together and have a little kiss if you want. 
cut stuff. The baby doesn't like it. <laughs> and now uh, I'm going to get get you Lau yeah. to whisper something to Amy that you think is going to make her laugh. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So. That's it. <laughs> hey, rude ones always work. Oh, yeah. Always works. <laughs> oh, he's making you work for it, Amy, isn't he? <laughs> Look at each other. Yeah, that's good. I chose to start with a wide shot to show the couple with the venue in the background. Obviously, they've chosen that venue for a reason, so you want that in the video. But then you want to go in and get some close-ups. Think about the edit in your head. You always want to think about cutting from a wide to a medium and then a close. Get collections of shots that you know are going to match up nicely together. And then you mentioned the rings. That would be yeah. nice. Put your hands on top of each other in a way that shows them. Yeah, that's nice. That's lovely. Shots like this add variety to your video and ensure that it's not just endless shots of people. Where possible, try and work together as a team with a photographer. It makes the day so much more enjoyable and helps you to both get great results. <laughs> Walking towards us, looking at each other, very romantic. And remember what I said about getting collections of shots. As the couple got closer, I got a shot of them holding hands for a bit of variety. So the couple shoot is over, all of the guests have entered into the wedding breakfast room and the couple are about to be welcomed in. So I'm quickly setting up my safety camera so it can get a nice wide shot as they come into the room and everybody applauds. I use this heavy duty light stand with a ball head so I can raise it up much higher than a tripod would ever go and it will see over any guest that may stand up and give an applause. The wedding planner announces the couple into the room I have the lovely wide shot and I have another camera in my hand auto focus on at the center and I can just pan with the couple as they head over to the table. A couple of hours have now passed, we've all had a break, the guests and the couple have had their meals so it's nearly time for speeches. I'm just going to adjust the exposure on this camera as the light levels outside have dropped. I'm now marking up the bride who's going to be giving a speech. I've got a nice white lav mic for her. And then the same with the best man. Put one here as well. So this, this won't make you any louder, but it will just record yeah, you for their I video. Imagine. Back into the wedding breakfast room. I'm getting my main cam ready. This is going to be a close up on the person who's speaking. Then this third camera here, this is going to be a reaction cam. So it's going to be a close up on either the, the groom or the bride and groom together. So I'm manning my main camera, just adjusting it for where the best man has decided to stand. We switched to the, to the virtual world. <laughs> Some of us know. <laughs> and then part way through the speeches, I actually decided to switch the roles of the main and reaction cameras because I managed to get better angles by doing so, as you'll see in the two shots he here. Was, he was saying that... He was, he was. He was, yeah, in the beginning, where, <laughs> he was, no, she's, no, she's wonderful, man, she's wonderful. If you do leave your main camera, always be sure to go back quite regularly just to check that the audio levels are good. And then it was time for the bride's speech, and I just adjusted my main camera accordingly. And we really wanted to share this moment with you. We did this wedding for you guys. So it's not really for us, if it was just us, it would just be a small one, but... And you'll see, I adjusted the reaction camera just to show the groom's reaction this time. Yeah, thank you. So, speech is all done. We've now headed into the marquee where the evening reception will be taking place. And I'm getting a nice wide shot here of the cake. And then, as I mentioned earlier, it's always good to get collections of shots, so I'm moving in for a nice close-up with a bit of movement. The guests are now starting to make their way from the main hall into the marquee, so it's nice to get a shot of them all arriving. I then capture a few shots of people mingling. I shoot this with the 85mm lens so I can keep far away and keep everything nice and natural. It's then time for cutting of the cake. Followed immediately by the first dance. Way back when we start.
And you'll see up there, I have my safety camera getting a nice wide shot of the room. And just like the ceremony, I have the handheld camera as well, so I can move about a little bit and get close-up shots from different angles. And again, I'm shooting it all in 50p so I can slow it down and make it all nice and romantic and dramatic. Usually after the first dance, either everybody fills onto the dance floor and it stays like that most of the night, or it stays really quiet. At this wedding, it stayed quiet initially, so I was getting a few quick shots of people who were on the dance floor. But then the DJ dropped some Calvin Harris and suddenly it got full. I always like to get in the middle of the action on the dance floor and use a wide angle lens to put the viewer right there in the middle of the party. I find that if you join in the fun a bit, it helps to get rid of any awkwardness of the guests that are being filmed. They let their guard down and you get some of their best moves on the dance floor. Always look out for the little ones. I tend to bend down and get on their level to show how things look from their point of view. You normally find some couples are really good dancers, so make sure you keep an eye out for them too. And basically just be sure to move around Try and get as many people having fun as you possibly can. And maybe consider filming it in 50 frames a second in case you want to pop any nice slow motion shots in there. And I normally find that once I've got about 10 to 15 good shots of different people dancing, it's normally enough to make a really good highlights video. Once you're certain you've got everything you need, you go over and say goodbye to the bride and groom and on this wedding I headed out just to get one more shot of the marquee at night. Well it's all done, it's been an incredible day, I hope you've learned a lot from this video. If you do have any questions on how to film a wedding on your own, please just post them down there in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. See you soon!